So let's fly the Fisk arrival into Oshkosh, but let's do it in that. And uh, this is the first I've seen it. I think I got a helicopter out there. I don't know if I can tell you to rock your wings. Are you with me? Yes, sir. It's Coast Guard 6517, and we'll give you the wing rocks. There it is. There's the first for everything in Oshkosh, Coast Guard. The MH-65's twin jet engines are spooling up, and we've got a minute to go over the story. Located in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, AirVenture is the world's largest aviation convention, with half a million attendees and 10,000 airplanes flying in over a matter of days. But you can't just show up with your plane. There's a 30-page notice to airmen outlining the procedures. We're going to talk about the Fisk arrival. It starts over the town of Ripon and follows the railway tracks to Fisk, but it's not that simple. This video is going to break it down in detail. And we happened to be filming on a record-breaking day when 2,000 airplanes arrived in one afternoon. I was excited to fly this procedure with Charlie from the U.S. Coast Guard. So yeah, this morning I was trying to flight plan out our flight. The only airport that really we could get out of the craziness of Oshkosh and show you a few things was like 30 miles on the other side of the lake. So I jumped on the phone and I looked around and I said, where could we go? And of course I knew we wanted to fly the Fisk arrival in. So I found this little airport right here, Nowatski. So I looked it up, called the guy at six o'clock this morning, hoping I didn't wake him up. He said, uh, I've been up since five. Heck yeah, come on out, use the airport. So I had no idea that it was going to be this quintessential Wisconsin, uh, right in the middle of a cornfield airport on final. I'm sitting around looking around like this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad we were able to do it. Tell them thanks. I'll give them a call, yeah. give them a link and say, hey, here's your airport on YouTube. Yeah. The day started off with an early morning getting to the airport and trying to figure out how the heck we we're going to rig this helicopter to shoot. This was definitely one of the coolest things we got up to at AirVenture 2016. When you guys are done there, we'll do a quick crew brief and get going but it wasn't our only Osh adventure. Here's a 90 second recap of what we got up to. We raced some thunderstorms with the Cessna mass arrival of nearly 100 planes, including one sneaky Super Cub. Had a great time engaging with the community at the sponsor booth meet and greets. And during a storm at the Bose booth, I was proud to give away a chopper ride over AirVenture to Tim. Right there. This is probably the craziest place I've ever rigged GoPros. Got to crawl through that crazy tube above the bomb bay on board Fifi. One of the world's last flying B-29 bombers. Produced a documentary about Gene McNeely, a key member of the Aeroshell aerobatic team. was humbled at the four-flight booth okay, well, that's an honor. when I was asked to sign a pilot's logbook. That's perfect. And threw the flight chop slogan onto Zach's shirt. This is actually probably more roomy than some of the airplanes I've dealt with. Had the privilege of a P-51 Mustang ride, and of course we flew formation. And tried out the latest SimTech from Redbird. We captured enough for many episodes, including the full Coast Guard flight. But for now, let's get back on board for the Fisk arrival. Right, we got everybody inbound from uh, Ripon. Come on over the railroad tracks, half mile in trail, no over unders, no side side side. I've flown Fisk in GA a couple times. Sure. Never done a chopper before. And That's I mean, one of the things for us about Oshkosh. We want to fly it like a GA pilot does. The part of being here and flying in here is doing that arrival. It's epic. So yeah, man, that's it's cool. something that we wanted to do. We're really watching for traffic here. Towers one two six point six. Welcome to Oshkosh. I got this guy. Yep, I got a side-by-side -side right now, so uh, I got a somebody that's uh, east of the railroad tracks with a low wing and two lights. I need you to uh, slide back to the right and get behind the guy that is to your right. That guy was lucky to get let off the hook and not instructed to break it off and restart the procedure. Ripon is the funnel point where you're supposed to set up directly over the railway tracks toward Fisk and make sure you have good spacing with the traffic ahead and behind. 
This flight was on Wednesday morning, a less busy time for arrivals, but it was still an exciting, steady stream of traffic to establish ourselves and fit in with. But we'd filmed a scene from the ground on Sunday afternoon, and we later found out it was the busiest arrival day in over a decade of Oshkosh history, with nearly 2,000 aircraft arriving in a few short hours. So this is Ripon. We didn't even realize where we were. We were just kind of on our way to Osh for the first day uh, from our Airbnb. And we saw all kinds of planes. We're like, where are we? And I pulled up for flight and I was like, oh my God, we're at Ripon. So we found the water tower stopped and we've been watching the planes coming in and converging. It's super cool to see it happening. Philip at FlightAware created this visualization for me. It sped up 200 times and it depicts the traffic at the peak of this afternoon's rush. And as per the NOTAM, we're only seeing ADSB equipped and mode S transponder aircraft, which essentially represents about a fifth of the actual traffic. So beyond studying this massive NOTAM in advance, you definitely want to have it on board the aircraft. You can also be given a really specific hold procedure, but this video will not address that. So the weather being bad, these guys couldn't get in, obviously, in the morning. I mean, yesterday, a bunch of thunderstorms. I know a lot of people were waiting anyway. So now that the weather has lifted a little bit, we've got everyone picking up where they were, maybe outlying airports, and now they're moving in. So it looks like we've got a formation of three that are together. They're in pretty tight. I don't know that you're allowed to do that at the Oh, they're arrived. pulling in now though. There they go. Those are RVs, yeah. Very cool. Now they just lined up. They yeah, know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They tightly lined up. That's beautiful. You got that shot, bro? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Next, we were inspired to follow the flow of converging traffic along the railway tracks heading toward Fisk. In some cases, it was fairly obvious that multiple aircraft close together were organized flights. That's going to be close. But in other cases, I wasn't so sure. They seemed mismatched and disorganized, and I think they were just too close and didn't mean to be together. See him, right? Like that's a good shot. These guys are way too close. After getting home, I asked the aviation community if anyone had been flying during this craziness, and Bobby sent in this clip. The moon that just rocked over fifth, turn right, and go ahead and get in behind him. Well, I'm over the river. I know, but there, I, let's you know, let's not run the risk of uh, them spinning us. You're good over here, as far as I can tell. I'm flying the publish. I know, but that's what I'm gonna fly. All right. Cessna over fifth. Right. I don't know and where those guys are going. Three, six. I've got like three of you guys at a quarter of a mile. So everybody who is now within a mile of Fisk, turn left. Break out and start again. All right. Best of November, Charlie. Turn, turn left. That's us. Turn left. Go back Four. and restart. We've got to have nose to tail. This is this is the issue. You know, if if you guys can. There's a guy really coming up behind us there. It'd be nose to tail and and the half mile in spacing. This is going to work out. Otherwise, we just stick it on a merry-go-round. We knew what we were seeing was challenging for all pilots involved, and to make matters worse, there was a hard landing and a gear collapse that closed runway 27 right about now. So a lot of these guys, including Bobby, got sent to one of the holds. But that's a story for another video. So Oshkosh AirVenture is the highest density of aircraft ever to arrive at any airport in the world. During this show, this is literally the most busy airspace in the world. So this is the Fisk trailer where these controllers are just standing here with binoculars, giving instructions to airplanes. You don't respond back to them, basically. You just rock your wings and you do what they tell you to do, and they got one after the other. It's really cool to watch them do it. Low wing quarter mile south of Fisk, rock your wings. Nice rock. wing rock, low wing quarter mile south of Fisk. I want you to make a right turn eastbound, right turn eastbound, start the turn now. So this is like a filter point. It's a few miles away from the airport that gets the airplanes nicely lined up because once they get bunched up at Ripon, they try to space themselves as well as they can. But these Fisk guys have to separate them again and space them out. Sometimes they split one off to runway 27, one to runway 36. These guys kind of prepare the traffic for the control tower as they get closer so it's not completely bunched up. Although today was clearly an exception. Our next stop was the orange dot on runway 27. And we saw that traffic had reached saturation point and pilots' limits were definitely being tested. Sorry, what did I just see there? I don't know. That looked to me like a double go around. <laughs> I don't think either one of those guys maybe saw each other until the last minute or something. But they both went around within wow. like two wing lengths of each other. With such intense busy traffic and a mix of different aircraft types, it's really important to be on top of your game if you intend to fly into Oshkosh. Oh, right over the orange dot. That was so cool. Brock did a pretty good job capturing that B-25 landing, but Dion totally nailed it. He's an amazing aviation photographer and actually ran EAA's Instagram for a day during AirVenture. Wow. 
I can't be sure what was happening here because I wasn't listening to the radio, but this is definitely not normal. What just happened there? This guy did a slant final really low over GA parking, and even my non-pilot crew members knew something was wrong here. Oh my! Wow! Maybe that was just an amazing sidestep after an ATC instruction and a perfect landing on the green dot? I don't know. Regardless, flying into Oshkosh definitely requires pilots to be on top of their game. And here's that F-86 doing a great job after the double go around. Bottom line, if your approach is unstabilized, go around and don't do something to push your limits just because it's Oshkosh. Page 8 of the Note Ham reviews that principle. Anyway, let's get back on board with the Coast Guard and do a less crazy Fisk arrival. And please remember to visit flightshops.com for your chance to win this month's featured prize from Bose, an A20 headset. Good morning, welcome to Oshkosh everyone. It's a beautiful day down here, light winds. We're landing runway 36 at stage 12 in Winota. Uh, we got a high wing about a half mile south of this, rock your wings. What got me interested in Coast Guard aviation, I was a junior in high school, and a helicopter just like that landed on a football field, we went out, talked to the pilots, and I thought, wow, that'd be pretty cool to do. So did some research. Uh, how many hours you got now in that thing? So about 2,500. Uh, and everybody, I mean, the, the whole week people have asked, it's hard to fly a helicopter. And, and I guess the easiest parallel of that is like driving a stick shift car. When you first get in a stick shift car, you're thinking about everything. Clutch, gas, okay, shift. Helicopter is the same way, and then uh, you get to a point after a couple hundred hours where it's just natural. Charlie definitely had it dialed in to visually fly directly over the railway tracks. All right, there, Highway, I just rocked their wings. Turn right zero nine zero. Join the East West Road for Left Bay Century on my three six. Welcome, Ash Cash. You can start doing other things with it. You find that your hands and your feet are manipulating the controls without your mind telling it what to do. So I'm gonna believe cool. you. I'm gonna take your word for it because that is what Dennis told me about my tail wheel flying and so on. When I was just so overwhelmed with overthinking it, can't even imagine. Though to me, the chopper seems like there's so much going on with instrumentation and two jet engines to manage. But FADEX system we talked about that controls the engine start stop logic and fuel control so all I have to do is tell it where I want my power to be at and it controls everything else automatically no roll on twist grip like you do in some of the earlier versions of the helicopter for us the automation we talked about with it reducing the workload uh, you saw us today on the way in 1800 feet 90 knots I could dial that up on the autopilot yeah. and it really you know we saw the three planes in front of us you know we saw the guy coming in above us from the right so really takes that workload off to let you look outside. And uh, this is the first I've seen it. I think I got a helicopter out there. I don't know if I can tell you to rock your wings. Are you with me? Yes, sir. It's Coast Guard 6517, and we'll give you the wing rocks. There it is. There's the first for everything in Oshkosh, Coast Guard. Go ahead and uh, turn right 090, join the east-west road for a left face uh, entry runway 36. I'm sure they'll put you someplace special. Really, a, it's a pilot's helicopter. Yeah. Uh, where you can just go out and fly. Yeah, that was awesome. You really could tell you were pretty much eyes out most of the time. Yeah. All I'm telling it to do is how much power I want, and it manages everything else. Uh, especially with the altitudes we fly at, uh, some of the environments we fly in at night, low over the water, uh, bad weather, with no visible horizon. Uh, the more automation that we can get to get eyes out to find somebody in the water or to fly the helicopter and take that workload off the pilot really gives us increased success in, in, in pulling somebody out of the water, finding something that we're out there to, to find. All right, good job, Light Sport. Cherokee, runway 36 right, clear to land beyond the red square for me this morning. Good job, guys. Y'all look great. Welcome to Oshkosh. So, how many times have you flown in a helicopter? I think like three, and, and that was the coolest for sure. No awesome. question. So the deal we made before we went flying, this is your helicopter guy now. I Yes. So rotor chops. Yes. Right? Yes. In all seriousness, Charlie definitely inspired me to start helicopter training. And we have a couple more episodes to make out of this material that we shot with the Coast Guard. Meantime, check out my friend Steve Owen Canivo's video. He also flew with them. Right, and Coast Guard, you're going to park on the pink dot for me. Hold short of Papa 2 and uh, they'll flag you in. Thanks again to the supporters on Patreon for helping make these productions possible. And thanks to the sponsors, we've got Aviation's greatest monthly contest. Last month, Rob won all this stuff, plus the Stratus 2S provided by ForeFlight. This month, Bose is providing an A20 headset for the featured prize. Please visit flightchops.com for your chance to win it, plus the stuff from all the other sponsors. And keep your flight chops sharp. I'm scared, Sarge. You should have another one in the background. Brock, I got We're that. All scared. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, USB charger for my phone. <laughs> Um, <laughs> smart questions okay. from Brock. Yes. What? Yeah. It's in a segment I like to call, Why Did We Bring Brock? <laughs>